So, so our theme this month is living the adventure. Thank you, Robbie. That was great. Living the adventure, and you know, getting back to the story with Nora, you know, when Nora and I finally, when she got back to me about what Easter was about, she had a similar idea that a lot of people have, which is that it's about the crucifixion, that Easter is about all that stuff that happened to Jesus, and yet, Easter's not about any of that. Easter's about resurrection. And for, in fact, if it weren't for the resurrection, there would be no religion. Re the resurrection is literally the reason why Christianity happened, because it is believed that Jesus rose from the dead. And that's what fulfilled the prophecy that created the Messiah and created a brand new religion. So it's not about all this other stuff. I have always loved Easter. I have literally always loved the holiday of Easter. And as a Catholic boy growing up, oh my God, every Easter, you would find me with my little missile under my arm. Every morning I was walking down the street, good morning, good morning, showing everyone that I was on my way to mass. Every single day. I went to church every single day. I, I wanted to be a priest uh, until I found out some things that I knew I couldn't do. <laughs> that was off the table. So. But on Easter week, I loved Easter week. I literally loved Easter week. You know, Holy Thursday, you know, as a Catholic schoolboy, we would go, go to all the services all week, and Good Friday, you'd get to sit in, in church, and they'd do the Stations of the Cross, and you would watch, and you'd relive the whole crucifixion, the whole death of Jesus. As a young boy, that was some scary sh stuff. <laughs> really. Um, and I've said this before, but uh, I remember the one, the one Good Friday that I, that I flunked geography, history, and science. <laughs> Three red Fs right on my report card. So somehow they thought it was appropriate to give it out on Good Friday. <clears throat> and I remember sitting there watching the Stations of the Cross thinking, yeah, you, not, you didn't have it as bad as I'm about to have it when I go home and hand this to my parents. <laughs> so, I want to back up to this week. So it was Holy Week. You know, do y'all know what Holy Week is? It, the Holy Week is the week that Jesus went through the Garden of Gethsemane and all of the travails of what it meant to be crucified, die, and then raise, rise from the dead. So this week was, interestingly enough, a week where I had to go in and have a procedure. And, and it's a simple procedure. I had I'd created a little hernia for myself, so I went in to do this little procedure, which I thought was going to be a little procedure that I thought was, you know, okay, a little bit of pain, then I'm fine. Not really. So I got to spend the whole week kind of resting and recuperating from this surgery. But what I want to bring up is something that happened the day of the surgery, which is this. We talk about right where I am. We talk about there's only one mind, there's only one, one God, there's only one energy, one life force. I am laying on the gurney waiting for them to come take me up to the, to, the, to the operating room. I'm all plugged in, all ready to go, and one of our congregants, and I won't say who, uh, but you're sitting here today, all of a sudden I see this person staring in front of me. At first I thought I was having a hallucination. I thought, oh my God, I think I'm seeing congregants. <laughs> Did you do the morphine yet? Tell me, <laughs> let me know. And, and this person came running over to me and I felt so loved. I was like, oh my God, I was feeling like I was all alone here with strangers, even though God is everywhere. And they're sticking the needles in, you're not so much God is everywhere. And so it was so beautiful, that moment. I was like, no matter where I am, I am being loved. No matter where I am, someone has my back. And my front, as this time, has them right there in front of me. And it was so beautiful. I know that you are here today sitting in this, in this house, and I just want you to know how much that meant to me to have that kind of love came pour, come pouring at me. Um, and then they did take me up to the opera, what? Oh, it's Jan, it was Jan, <laughs> yes. But she came in, it was so funny, now I can tell since you've outed yourself. She came in and she was like a 16 year old girl. She saw me and she went, oh my God, Reverend James! And I'm like, hi, <laughs> is my back open? <laughs> yeah, I was like, wow. So, but it just reminded me of all the love, all, all the absolute love. And then they took me upstairs for the, for the um, operation. And it, you know, if you know me, you know that I don't like confined spaces. So they have to tie you to these things. I had no idea they had to tie you down. And they did. And they started and I was like, oh, this is like snorkeling times 10. 
I was, I was like, this is not going to work for me. And notice I'm like in a crossed position. And both arms are out here. They're about to tie them up. If I saw nails come out, it was over. And then I just, I said to my anesthesiologist very sweetly, I just said, I said, I think I'm about to have an anxiety attack. And all I remember her saying is, no, you're not. Boom, done, gone. That was it. And then I, and then I woke up and I was fine. So it was a very interesting week for me this week. And Connie took care of the office so that I could just flit in and out when I had to. Um, so this month, living the adventure. Everything we do is an adventure, yes? Everything we do is an adventure. My kids think that I can, no matter what I do, I will find a science of mind lesson in it. <laughs> Drives them nuts most of the time. But I do, and I want to do that. So the title of my talk today is The Search is Over. The search is over, and I have a couple questions today. And the first question is, question for me that I've been thinking about, what do you think, what do you think Jesus was searching for, if he was searching for anything? What do you think Jesus was searching for? My glasses are so, like, cloudy, so now it's just going to be my eyes. What was Jesus searching for? And more than that, what are you searching for? What are you searching for in your life? What, what do you consciously search for? You know, we only have so many minutes in a day. What do you do with those minutes? How much of your life is spent contemplating, thinking about something that you want, some, some type of life you want to live? What are you searching for? What is it that you really want? Because what if, based on Karen's song, what if, no matter what you were searching for, you had right where you are, right where I am, no matter what it is, no matter what it is you think you're looking for, what if it was right where you are, right here today? Whatever that is you think you want out of life. Because that's what we teach. That's what this science teaches. That right where I am, everything is possible. Not only possible, but probable. So what if everything you could possibly ever want in your life already is right where you are? What would your life look like then if you really weren't searching? Because personally, I don't think that Jesus was searching for anything. I actually think Jesus got it. I think he knew it. Now, the story of Jesus you know, when we go back and think about how many people wrote about Jesus and how long after Jesus did they write it, so who knows how much of it is accurate, how much of it is, is, is just, you know, talking down the line to see, you know, how much more can I add to this? But I do believe there was this consciousness named Jesus the Christ who got it. And I don't know that he was searching for anything or wanted anything more than love, to just share love, to bring love to the universe. So here's a quote by Deepak Chopra. He says, the symbolic language of the crucifixion is the death of the old paradigm. Resurrection is a leap into a whole new way of thinking. So, if the crucifixion is death of an old paradigm, what paradigms do you need to crucify? Seriously. What paradigms are you still living that need you, and by the way, only you can do it, that need you to look it straight in the face and say, no more. This life doesn't work for me anymore. This type of believing doesn't work for me anymore. This type of consciousness doesn't work for me anymore. Because if that's what the crucifixion represents, and I believe it does, us saying, the body saying, I'm done. Take everything you want. None of this matters. There is a bigger picture here. And that's really what the resurrection's about, stepping into a new paradigm. So at Easter, we get the opportunity to say to ourselves, what's not working? So how many of you, you don't have to tell me what it is, how many of you know something specific in your life that is not working? Okay, so that's like almost all of you. How many people don't have anything in their life that isn't working perfectly? That's like all of you. <laughs> So, so we all have things that we know aren't working. So why are we still working it? Seriously, 
Why? What? Where is the? Where is the the um the 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 um disconnect? Where is the disconnect? And let me tell you where it is. The disconnect is in the resurrection. You know, if Jesus came back from the dead and. He did, maybe he did, maybe he didn't. Maybe he did in everybody's consciousness because he showed up in their mind, however you want to look at it. But if the resurrection is the new paradigm, I'm here to say the new thing, that new thing that you're into, that new thing that's waiting for you is right where you are. You do not have to go out and find it. You do not have to go looking for your thing. You don't have to go find, as I'm reading this book, your one thing. You don't find it out there. Your thing. That thing, that thing that you are, that thing that moves you, that thing that lives you, that passion that you are is right where you are. No one can give it to you. No one can get you excited about it. No one can tell you what yours should be. No one. It's right there. So where's the disconnect? Part of it is we haven't disconnected from the old thing. We're still thinking. How many people still think that they can fix that old thing and make it work? I, now, how many people like to fix things instead of just getting a new thing? Great, this is a great congregation. That was, that was like three of you still fixing things. But I fix things sometimes, but sometimes it's just go get the new thing. How many of you buy a new phone every time Apple upgrades? Yeah, they're not doing well. Anyway, better, bad, bad image. I did. I actually liked my old one better, but that's not going to help this talk. So. <clears throat> So the point is, if you're living in an old paradigm that does not work for you, the only, only thing that matters is that you notice it, you make a decision, this no longer serves me, and you take it off the table. It really is time on this Sunday, this Easter Sunday, for us to literally get into this idea of resurrection, that there is a new paradigm. There is so much new in the world and it's so easy for us. You know, I'm on pay day 27 of CPR. This has been an amazing CPR for me. I've been able to throw everything as aside and just start over. This CPR has made such sense to me, this concept of there's so much new to, to participate in. Reverend Nancy stepping out into a class that three months ago she would have never thought she was going to do, an online class where she's going to be out in the world. You know, where is your next thing? Where is your new thing? So, Ernest Holmes said this. Ernest Holmes said, the resurrection is the death of the belief that we are separate from God. Resurrection is the death of the belief that we are separate from God. The disconnect that I'm talking about today, that thing that disconnects us from knowing who we are, that thing that disconnects us from being able to literally choose the life we want to live, the disconnect is that, truthfully, we haven't really embraced our identity as the divine. We're still thinking we're Barbara Shane, or we're James Mellon, or we're Karen Mitchell. Insert your own name. You're still thinking that that name, that person that you are, is somehow the fullness and the breadth of everything that you are when it's not. When we say, I am the ocean in the wave, I think sometimes we get all excited about that, but I think sometimes we forget the ocean is immense. The ocean is infinite in scope, pure potentiality, possibilities everywhere. So you have the opportunity when you talk about that ocean in a wave to live as the ocean, not just the wave. So, Ernest Holmes also says this, it would be a great mistake to suppose that Jesus was different from other men. Think about that. He was a man who knew himself and his direct relationship to the whole. This was his secret to his whole success. Do you know that the definition of the word Easter is to be released? <laughs> That's what that word means, Easter, to be released. I don't think in the 13 Easter talks, I suddenly turned into like a, <clears throat> I don't think in the 13, it's <laughs> my hands, I don't think in the 13 <laughs> Easter talks I have done, I have ever, ever talked about releasing for resurrection, that Easter stands for releasing. So back to the question, what do you got to release? What do you need to release today? What is it you'd like to cut yourself free from and just step into that newer paradigm? 
Are you ready to cut yourself loose from lack? Are you willing to cut yourself loose from any kind of physical ailment? Are you willing to cut yourself loose from any type of mental confusion? Are you willing to step into a paradigm of clarity, certainty, love, creativity, passion, success? Are you willing to do that? I think there's an awful lot for each one of us to let go of. And I think letting go is a big part of it. You know, <clears throat> when Jesus was on the cross, so they say, he talked about, they talk about how he was so clear that he was forgiving everyone. Now, I don't know about you, but <clears throat> I think that's a pretty tall order to forgive everyone in the position Jesus was in. Some of us are still holding grudges because somebody cut us off on the freeway. <laughs> Not you, Nancy. <clears throat> but some of us are still holding grudges from our childhood. We're still holding grudges to people that really didn't do much to us other than act the way they acted in their own life, and we happen to be there. Think about that. So today is a perfect day for each one of us to be willing to release, to let go. So, and now here's the next question. What do you need to be released from? Not only do you need to release, <clears throat> what do you need to be released from? What are you still a part of that you need to be separate from? And just let that, let that reverberate in your mind. Just ask yourself the question, what do I need to be released from? A way of thinking, a way of living, a relationship, whatever it is. So if Ernest Holmes says that Jesus showed us this thing called wholeness, oneness, well, I gotta tell you, this week for me has been really fascinating. It really has. And when I was in, in St. Joseph's Hospital and Jan walked in, there was a moment in my mind where I literally felt this expansiveness because I got it. We walk around saying, God is all there is. I am one with everything. I am one with everything. Well, here's what I know. I am so one with everything that I somehow manifested her being scheduled at the same time as me. That's how it works. It's not by accident that someone shows up. It's not by accident. Nothing is by accident. Nothing in your life is by accident. It is all on purpose. It is all because you, somewhere in your mind, have decided this is the truth of my life. So you have the opportunity today on Easter, Easter Sunday, to take a look at all the ways you have been crucified and killed throughout your lifetime. <laughs> How many of you have crucifixions you know of? <laughs> right? It's true. We do. So you can look at all those things and literally say, forgive them. Forgive it all. We say love only, forgive everything. It's like, it's, it's like the Easter mantra. Love only. Jesus stood for loving only. That's what he came to teach. Love, 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 love. Forgive everything and remember who you are. All three of those were part of the ministry of Jesus the Christ, the rabbi from Galilee. So today's a great opportunity to let go of anything from the past. And here's the best part. I know that every single person in this room wants more success in their life. I know that every single person in this room would be very happy if suddenly they won the lottery. Wouldn't you? How many of you would like to win the lottery? Yeah. Right, we all. Who wouldn't want to win the lottery? What is it at right now? Millions. millions. <laughs> Should be billions. Okay. Whatever it is. Here's the thing. I believe that this philosophy is the lottery. I do. I believe that this philosophy, what we teach, the power of the mind, your ability to let go of the things that are still holding on to you and your ability to step into an idea of yourself that is so much bigger than anything you can imagine. That's the lottery. I believe that every single one of us has the power in our mind to create exactly what we want out of our lives. And this message is for the, for the youngest here and the oldest here. There is no difference. It doesn't matter where you are on that long scale of life. Everything is possible. Everything is possible. I was at a, a, a memorial service yesterday, <clears throat> and there was a woman at the memorial service, and she, she turned to me. She had, I guess she had come here at some point, but she recognized me, and she was saying how much she loved what we teach and all, and she says, and you know what? She said, I am 80, 
nine, I think she was 89 years old. She says, and I just got my first TV series. She said, I think my career is about to take off. <laughs> and I just looked at her and I said, that is so awesome that you're not thinking this is an anomaly. Like, oh my God, someone hired me at 89. Can you even believe it? That's not where she is. She's like, and then she said, hey, if Betty White can do it, I can do it. And I went, there you go. Find a reference that works. So what is your thing? What's the thing you're still not doing? What's the thing that you haven't risen to? Where in mind have you not risen? And it's all about consciousness, Lynn Wask. It's all about <laughs> consciousness. That's all it is. Consciousness, consciousness, consciousness. If someone says to you, how can I get, how can I create more success in my life? What's the answer? How can I create more love in my life? What's the answer? How can I create more money in my life? What's the answer? <clears throat> That's the only answer. How great that you don't have to remember any answers. But one word, consciousness. Are you willing to let go of what needs to be let go of? Are you willing to release as Easter says, we must release. Release the body of your life. Release all the stuff that you've had up to this point. All of it, the good, the bad, and the indifferent. Because I don't think there's anyone here who couldn't have an even better experience of life. Yes? yes. All of us, we could all have an even better experience of life. You know, when I, uh, when I left the hospital, the nurse said to me, she said, you're gonna need a couple weeks to just lay low. And I was like, I don't have a couple weeks to lay low. She said, take at least a day or two. I said, that I can do. And all, it's all about the body. You must talk to your body. Consciousness, health is about consciousness. Everything is about consciousness. Are you willing to really take back your mind? Because that's really what it's about. And who are you taking it back from? This is interesting. Who are you taking your mind back from? Mostly you're taking your mind back from race consciousness. You're taking your mind back from all the stuff out here that has taken hold of your mind. All the things that you have come to believe, all the things that you've been taught, all the things that actually have proved themselves, and that's the whole thing. They do prove themselves. And so it's easy to buy into it and stay stuck. But that's what a habit's all about. Now here's the thing, would you like to create habits that you fall back on that are so soundly rooted in principle that you don't even have to worry anymore what you're thinking because you know you're always thinking the truth? Isn't that what we all want? Yes? yes. Uh, really? Yes. Okay, so today, here's what I'm gonna ask you to do. I asked you earlier to think about what does Easter mean? What, what does this whole thing mean? Well now I've given you two things. The word Easter means to release. Today we're celebrating letting go of all the stuff that doesn't work for us, all the beliefs, all the core beliefs that don't work. And Easter is also the this, this celebration of the resurrection, meaning that we rise in consciousness. We rise so high in consciousness that we don't allow all of this stuff down here to bother us. When I was on the phone with AT&T for almost two hours, I had to treat the entire time just like Nancy, treat the entire time, and they kept losing me, and I'd have to call back, and then start all over again, and telling them, and you know what I finally did, somewhere around an hour and 30 minutes? I realized that it was me. I said, wow, you have a little attitude, you're treating, but you're treating with attitude. I mean, there is a way to treat with attitude. You know, I can say God is all there is, and, and still have attitude. Anybody? I can be like, God is all there is. And I am God. You, uh, you are God too. <laughs> AT&T is God. Sometimes. I realized I had to start changing my consciousness. And that if I changed my consciousness, I would attract someone who could help me. And can I tell you, once I finished treating, that time I didn't call them right back. I waited, treated, called back. And I got this guy who at first seemed like he, he was not gonna help me at all. He's like, I don't understand what you're saying to me. I don't understand what you're saying to me. I'm like, well, it's this. And then finally he went, oh, so you're saying they charge you all this money and they shouldn't have. I went, uh-huh. <laughs> because someone came out and changed your phones. Uh-huh. Oh, I can fix that. I said, in what time frame? And he says, no, I can do it right now. And it took another 20 minutes and it was all done. But what happened? I changed me. I think we spend too much time trying to change the world. I think we're trying to release everybody, and, but first we're going in and telling them how to release. 
And then I think we're not giving ourselves the opportunity to rise in consciousness so clearly, so powerfully, that you have to manifest the good. Because that is what we teach, the mental equivalent. We teach that whatever you are equal to in mind will show up in form. So just look at your world of form. That's what you're equal to at this particular moment in time. But I think today, I think you can be equal to more. I think I can be equal to more. I think today, you can let go of all the things that bother you, all the things that you still think make up who you are. And I think today, you can become equal. You can create the mental equivalent of success, of love, of health, of passion, of creativity. You can be that person. You can be that Christ consciousness. You can be what Ernest Holmes says. You can be that one person who is for something and against nothing. That one person who as soon as that mind reaches that level of consciousness, the waters part and the stone is rolled away. And what comes forward is the perfect, perfect vision of all that we are. And that is the entire ocean in a drop. So happy Easter, happy letting go, happy Resurrection Day, happy rising to the highest thought you can about you. And what I know is this day continues to unfold perfectly, moment by moment by moment. Celebrate the entire day, not just the time we're here together. Celebrate the entire day. When you go to bed tonight, I want you to go to bed with such energy saying, I had the most amazing day of my life. I've let go of everything I needed to let go of. And I have stepped into all that I am. I cannot wait to wake up tomorrow and get started. Living my life from a whole different perspective. Because I know who I am. Namaste.